It's uh, giving your no. Yes. Yeah, nice to meet you. I'm Flora. So USB with the brochures and some more information oh, yeah. on the metro, and yeah. that's the hard Here, all right, but then I did a couple of laps around the, to find the circuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I have done this, yeah. Old CNC. Yourself? Yeah, good. Rob. Craig, how are you going, Rob? Good. Welcome. Tell me, Flora, what's yes. going on here? Okay. So you've got screen gauges. Yep, so, so screen to make the screen. What, what else do you have? Screen to make the screen. Yeah, so Peter will be there and Kenneth will be there and the Barrow will be there. 
We might uh, we might start everyone. So grab a seat if you'd like a uh, if you'd like a drink or anything. There's water, um, soft drink. We'll do that. Yeah, yeah. Hard copy we'll, we'll in and soft copy. And... So you guys have got Yes. Do you want to use that as well? I've got some catalogs over there. So, welcome everybody. Um, we thought we'd have a, a few more today, but uh, as industries, we never know when we're going to have work and, and uh, when we need to get called out. But um, thanks for, for attending today. Um, thought I'd go for a, a bit of a, a background of applied measurement and then pass over to, uh, to Brian for a minute. Um, so we're super excited about this um, technology uh, coming into applied measurement. Um, very exciting stuff uh, it gives it gives everyone a, a, another option to to strong gauging um, and setting up the new position centers and all sorts of things um, for, for structural monitoring for component testing uh, and just about any other application you so um, a bit of a background of, of applied measurement we've been going since uh, 1976 so i've been around for a fair fair while uh, and, and pretty much uh, our core business is sensors and instrumentation. Uh, so we do a bit of uh, manufacture of load cells. You'll see a few load cells and our signal conditioning back there. Uh, but we like to think of ourselves as a bit of a one-stop shop for anything measurement. So anything, any physical measurement, um, we'd like to think that you could think of us and we might have a solution for you. Uh, we also have a, an ARDA accredited laboratory out the back, which you guys will see a bit later, uh, which is for force. We're the only guys in Australia that uh, calibrate uh, crash test on load cells, so multi axis load cells in Australia. Uh, unfortunately, there's only a couple of guys, uh, a couple of guys that are um, left in Australia doing crash testing, uh, but we, we support um, and calibrate all their multi axis load cells. Uh, we also do offer some calibration in the form of pressure, linear position, GPS, um, and a few different um, 
Hunters and as we have traceable as well. And so we can offer traceable certification for those measurement times uh, and our NITA calibration for any, any force uh, under 2, 2 kilonewton, uh, 22 kilonewton, so. Uh, we also pride ourselves on, on having technical background, so we're not just a reseller. Uh, we sell, support, calibrate, troubleshoot, and repair if, if needed or if, we, if we've got the capabilities here. Uh, if we don't have, then they go back to supplier. Uh, but we do have a fair bit of knowledge, which we'll, uh, which we'll see a bit later as well. So we sort of pride ourselves on being a, a one-stop shop for anything sensitive in this rotation. Okay, so we do offer strain gauge training seminars as well. Um, and now with, with the Metrum uh, gear, we'll probably offer that sort of training as well. Uh, product demonstration, and we also offer repair service. So pretty much anything we we sell, we will support to our full extent. So we'll, we'll try and help with calibration repairs and, and so on. Uh, the, the sort of um, measurement that we cover is this here. So with anything from strain and stress to, to color measurement, uh, acceleration, so inertia measurement, uh, pressure, displacement, uh, we do a bit of vehicle dynamic work as well, uh, loss, uh, any, pretty much any physical measurement we, we uh, will have a solution to. Okay, uh, also we offer the other end as well, so we can offer uh, not only the sensor, the sensor, the instrumentation to go along with it. So depending if uh, what sort of analysis you want to do, whether you want to have a, a digital readout, or you want to log, or you want to analyze those signals. Uh, we've got uh, a fair bit of instrumentation that we've got set up for data acquisition. Okay, down to signal analysis software. Uh, we have had a, a fair bit of experience with our signal analysis software, so the basic functionality where we're happy to do some, help you guys with reporting and, and, and things like that. Uh, but any complicated things uh, we can help out to a certain, certain extent. It's not, it's not right in our wheelhouse, uh, but we're happy to help out as, as much as we can. Okay. Um, so a bit on strain gauge technology, probably all familiar with the, with the, the strain gauge technology, so I won't, I'll just gloss quickly over it. Um, yeah, so we, we were originally a distributor for Showa Strain Gauges, which is a Japanese company. Um, we picked up uh, micro measurements about 12 months ago, uh, 18 months ago now, um, purely uh, for support for them. We found that uh, other distributors would have prior to experience and knowledge. Um, and as we've used micro measurements gauges for many years, load cells um, and applying them to, to uh, customers' uh, specimens, we've, we've got a lot of knowledge there. So we offered up our, our knowledge base to micro measurements and they've now, we're now uh, their distributor in Australia. Uh, so <clears throat> it goes back with our, uh, with our strain gauge uh, application. Okay, we're off all familiar with uh, strain gauge patterns and all the rest of it. So if you guys have got an application and are unsure of what your, uh, you know, what sort of strain gauge you need for your application, by all means give us a call, more than happy to help. Okay, um, together with special use sensors, so weldable strain gauges for, for longer term measurements, um, crack propagation. Shear, shear measurements. Okay, so we've had a bit of experience within many different industries as well. Uh, oil and gas, automotive, uh, civil engineering, uh, the of, uh, you know, just about any inquiry. And we've even asked to measure the force of the reef, ice, feet as they're, as they're running, things like that. So it's some weird and wonderful applications. So don't feel that. Um, uh, you, you've got a something that's outside our scope, so we may have we may have had some experience or something similar. Okay, 
Okay, we also we also offer a, a, a wide range of, of high end pressure transducers, um, from your, your standard industrial right up to your high temperature, high frequency um, wind tunnel testing, all those sort of high end applications, blast testing. Uh, all different ranges, so right down to, to low pressure, uh, acoustic pressure, and microphone, uh, right up to high pressure, high, hydraulic, to 10,000 pounds. All right, obviously a, a, a wide range of load cells we offer as well. Um, just about any application, there's um, uh, load pins, shear beam, standard S beam and, and custom type load cells. Uh, our manufacturer can give you a drawing and say so you can make this into a load cell. We've got some facility here to do it. We can do customised load cells and load cell ranges as well. All right, we also do some stuff for the C. We've got an AIS man with us. Are, are you familiar with? Yeah, yeah. That's, um, he's kind of good. Yeah? Yeah, so we we uh, we're doing a lot with with this bit of sports science at the moment as well. So um, all that uh, all the all the high, all the top footy teams, soccer teams, and rugby teams uh, have have some of our equipment in some shape or form. Uh, this one was designed to measure uh, hamstring strength or any muscle groups for uh, benchmarking for uh, for recovery in. Uh, injury as well, right? You'd probably be able to tell us a lot more about, about the system than, than I would. Um, but these are the, these sort of forms of instrumentation that are getting quite popular in the industry. Um, so I just thought I'd, I'd throw this in to show you a bit of the diversity that we've got there as well. Um, right down to accelerometers. So we, we sell accelerometers into all forms of industry, into defence, into rail, Automotive um, test and measurement, so universities and, and things like that as well. Um, and we're, we're, we're pretty much up to date with strain uh, with uh, accelerometer technology. Uh, so, uh, as I said, if you've got any application that you might be able to, might need to measure vibration, pressure, load, this call might be able to uh, take it down. Okay, right down to inertia system. So these, these photos here of a, a high temperature application of exhaust manifolds that are actually water cooled. So that's a triaxial accelerometer uh, measuring the vibration on an exhaust manifold. Um, single dual axis triaxial. Uh, these are uh, in particular uh, DJB accelerometers from the UK. Uh, and they are these are electric accelerometer. So high, high frequency. We don't need to know. So linear position as well. So we have a, a, a wide range of, of non-contact and contact linear position and rotary position. Um, so you basically let us know what uh, displacement or rotation you want to measure. Um, and what sort of output you want. And we can find that including environment and all sorts of things. But uh, we've got a lot of solutions in um, explosion proof rated sensors, uh, XIA, ANZEX type rated sensors, uh, right down from one, one millimetre up to one millimetres. Uh, wireless telemetry uh, is becoming uh, a, a, a lot more popular in the past few years as well. Manchacord are another U, UK based company uh, and they offer uh, wireless Telemetry, and you can basically plug any form of sensor into it. So we've got different different versions for strain gauge, current, voltage, temperature, pulse, etc. Um, and you can 
relay that back to uh, whether it be a, um, a base station with a serial output or a USB. Um, it's a nice software. It's has been really, really popular in uh, mining applications at the moment. Uh, so where they're doing maintenance on on uh, big vehicles where they can't have people in the way so they used to have a guy underneath the the uh, vehicle with a dial gauge. Uh, and they shake the absolute life out of these things while the guys are underneath there, and they still need to take a reading um, and uh, very dangerous. So these, uh, this bit of kit is perfect for that application where you know, you don't want a human underneath the machine. Uh, and they can relay um, signals back up to uh, 800 metres um, and up to 2 kilohertz. Okay, so when it comes to, to data capture, uh, we offer a wide range of data addition from low cost um, to high end. Uh, so depending on your sampling, depending on your, your um, environment, we have a, a, a lot of different options for that. You know, IP rated data acquisition, you know, low cost and high sampling frequency as well. So we, um, this is just a slide for universities and how far how fast is the event occurring? Well, we, we obviously want to sample 10 times faster to get to, to get the right. You said that, uh, that rule as well, the sampling? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, so the, I suppose the benefits with the IMC data acquisition is that we, that we offer uh, is there's no external signal conditioning at all. Um, so if you're doing, using strain gauges, all the bridge completion, uh, 120 ohm, 350 ohm. Um, uh, bridge completion is all integrated into the machine, um, together with high frequency sampling up to 100 kilohertz. Okay, and they're also equipped with um, things like CAN bus, GPS, Wi-Fi, applications as well. So this would be something that we would uh, be using. Okay, um, and also customise. So uh, if you've got a, a train wagon that you can maybe link with an Ethernet cable, we can have a module on each each wagon, and all they need is to be linked with the, the uh, 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 a, a Ethernet cable. If you need something cent uh, centralised or lab based, uh, or if you need something ruggedised that needs to be in a harsh environment, um, or something portable kit based. That. Um, so some post pressing, post processing. Uh, so just to close, you know, we, we have a I think about thirty five suppliers, um, all with a wide range of sensitive instrumentation that we offer, which is a bad thing. Uh, but um, there's not much crossover, so we we sort of try and have broad range of all sensors and instrumentation um, for a bit of a, a bit of a one-stop shop. Any questions? So um, yeah I'm not sure uh, if you guys how much you guys have, have, have had a look at the electric um, equipment uh, but I'd like to pass it over to, to Brian. Brian's come all the way from uh, from the UK to see us. Um, yes. Yes, get some sun. <laughs> get away from the, the cold snap that they're having. Snow this weekend. Yeah. So we're we're very excited to, for Brian to be here. He's um, he's put in a lot of effort, uh, and we've we've got another uh, few trips to Port Hedland and Brisbane, um, showing this equipment pretty much all the way around Australia. Uh, and we are we will have um, plenty of time with you guys if you if you are interested about knowing more. Uh, we're more than happy to come and see each, each one of you if the, if the interest is there. Um, so if you don't get any questions answered today, be sure to, to grab a business card or to ask anyone around the around the traps and we can we can move on from there. Okay, over to you, Brian.
Craig was saying if the interest is there, I'm sure it'll be when the interest is there. Yes. <laughs> Thanks all for uh, coming on today, everyone. As Craig says, um, applied measurement, uh, we signed up applied measurement last year, um, and they've got a lot of experience, obviously, with strain gauging, with LBDTs, with different sensors. So it's a natural fit for our technology. Um, and so we're really excited to have applied measurement on board now to be our partners, sales partners in Australia, covering all of Australia. Um, what do we do? So it's got video extensometers there, but as you'll see, we've got three different business units, and I'll touch upon them briefly on each one. I'll try not to uh, do a death by PowerPoint, uh, so try to keep it as brief as possible. Quick history about Emetra. Uh, we're, we're a spin-out, well, we are a spin-out of Bristol University in the UK. Our founder is a, the current technical director. What he looked at was using the uh, pixels and pattern recognition to get different types of point-to-point uh, -point measurement system. So we use point-to-point, -point, we use a pattern, and then we track that pattern. Uh, we've been going now, this is our 15th year. Uh, we've been growing each year, uh, and a lot of that growth has been through bringing on sales partners like Applied Measurement, Globally, we'll be to Sold over 400 pieces of equipment now worldwide on a global basis, um, and we've got some pristine customers as well. Uh, people like Rolls Royce, Bombardier, a lot of the front of the grid F1 teams, and obviously, we've got the F1 coming across here next weekend. Um, so, a lot of the front of the grid teams have got our equipment and use it quite effectively. Some people say video measurement is a bit of a black art. Uh, and it's a new technology, recent and everything else. I'm sure none of you are around when this happened. <coughs> okay. This is the Tacoma Straits uh, bridge that vibrated around and obviously collapsed as well. Um, I say, I'm sure none of you are around, but you can see here that we're using video on these lampposts. They've got markers here. So they use that as a conversion factor. So they could have been you know, one foot. Uh, each black mark and white mark could have been one foot. What they did was translate that to see how much it was moved. And, they had, and Professor Farkerson, who was there doing the videoing, he would have used that technology. So all we've done is taken it on and moved it on. As technology does evolve, we've taken it on and evolved it again. So now, obviously, we're using video to measure different things. So to give you an example, the smallest thing we measured is a single carbon fiber, seven microns in diameter. And we've managed to get a modulus out of that as well. Uh, to large, we use it for structural monitoring. And we've measured a bridge 700 meters distance, 30 meters section of that bridge. And we saw displacement of 0.3 of a millimeter. So that's the large, small to the large that we'll be using it. Let's say it's a point to point measurement. So you are measuring between two points. How does it work? So this is our core technology. Uh, what we'll do is look at a particular point. This is looking at a bridge, a steel bridge with some bolts on there. We're using that as our pattern. We'll look at it again, next frame. What we'll do is see how much that's moved, how much it's displaced, and obviously it's anchored by a um, graph and obviously a number as well. Look for it again in the third, and then we can measure again. So this is showing it for our structural monitoring side of things. So an example of that, this is on a wire test. Got a strain measurement on there. Let's have target boxes. You can see in the middle there, go down. That's the actual point that we're measuring. The pattern we're following is here. We use the grayscale, the 256 gray covers, on the grayscale between black and white, and we use a monogram cam. Beauty of video, obviously, once you do a test with using traditional uh, extensometers, clipponic extensometers, or strain gauges, that's your sample broken, that's it. With a video, you can save it and we can reanalyze it. We call it post processing. So you can reanalyze, you can put new measurements on, you can take measurements away, you can move them around, whatever you want to do, without having to produce a new sample.
calibration standards obviously very important. Everyone wants to know: is it calibrated to a standard? Can it be used to calibrate to a standard? We can class our video extensometers to ISO 9513, which is an ISO standard for extensometers, and ASTM 83. We can get down to 0.2 percent. Normally, we're at 0.5 percent or B1 for E83. So that does give you the confidence that it can be traceable as a standard as well. Here's another example. We can use multiple gauges. What we've got here is one axial, five transverse strain gauges put onto the sample. So in real time, we can have 100, uh, so 200 measurement points. So that could be 100 strain gauges on your sample in real time testing. When you go to post-process, it's unlimited. So you can put on as many gauges as you want. The only thing that limits it is the processing power within your uh, PC or laptop. That's the kind of measurements we have. So as you can see, there's a various range of measurements there. Makes us unique. Uh, a lot of our competition haven't got those kind of measurements. They can't give you things like rotation, uh, Poisson's ratio, can't give you dual average strain. Uh, this is on our uh, materials testing uh, software, an extensometer, strain measurements as well. So in the advanced package, you can get unlimited there. Routine, obviously, from cost conscious, you get a no, limited number of those measurement points. We also have shear strain there, crack length. So when we're doing crack length, it's a DCB term test. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. Uh, what type it is, is basically what you've got is uh, two pieces of material adhered together with an adhesive. As they beat it apart, we have to look at where the tip of the crack is. So if we were all to look at the tip of the crack, we'd all come up with a different result of where we thought the tip was. So it's totally subjective. Our software now makes that non-subjective and it tells you where the tip of the crack is. Marking as well, um, with structural monitoring, so rail, bridges, that kind of thing, we can use the natural pattern quite often. As I say, if we're using monochrome uh, cameras, what we're looking for is a difference between the black and the white using the gray scale. Uh, for materials testing, generally we would have a um, uniform color, so obviously metals would be uniformly metallic. Um, so what we may do is either apply a speckle pattern using spray paints, Again, we're conscious that everyone's cost conscious, so every company is cost conscious. So we just use the cheapest spray paint you can get, water based, because what happens then is it bleeds together and it gives you that natural gray color. We've also developed a, a um, stamp set, which you'll see in the demo that we've got through in the lab. Um, because again, if we're all to apply a speckle pattern using spray paint, we'd all come up with a different pattern. So again, what we've done is try to make it more uniform that each person has they've got a stamp on to get a different pattern. They may look like they're in columns and rows, but they're not. They're all different sizes, they're all different uh, shapes, and they're not in columns and rows. So it gives us that random pattern that we can train. This is the DCB specimen I was talking about earlier on. That's what we do as it goes into a tensile there, it starts to move along. And we tend to determine where the tip of the crack is, which is what this standard determines. I'll see. So that's used on metals, composites is being widely used now as well. Uh, so it may apply to <laughs> research institutes, universities, that kind of thing. So now we go on to the structural monitoring. So that was a lot on our materials testing division. Uh, we also use the same software, the same system controller, quite often the same cameras. Um, the only thing that differs is obviously the lens to give you different fields of view. So you can see here, this was this case study. It was in Seoul at night time. Use a wider uh, angle lens. We were 700 meters away, the lights were actually shining on the targets, and we could look at the resolution 0.3 of a millimeter. That was just traffic going across the bridge. We could see how much the uh, bridge was moving with traffic going across, just normal road traffic. The intelligent part is all down the algorithms of the software. We 
we'll use a standard camera, so one megapixel, two megapixel, five megapixel, and typically we'll divide that down into one two hundredth of a pixel. That's how far we're going in to sub interrogate to look, get our measurements. So that's why with materials we're looking at a small field of view down to one millimeter step, and then we can be looking at my points. Um, again, this is uh, the technology being used for a bridge. This was a bridge in London with the London Underground going across. It sounds a bit uh, backward that you've got a bridge with an underground train going over it, but that's what, uh, what we were doing here. You can see we picked a natural pattern, just one of the bolts on the steel bridge, and we're using that to track. We'll play the video going through now. You can see it is live, we've got people wandering around there. That's as the train goes over. So we're looking at uh, you know two millimeters of displacement maximum. Then it comes back to rest. So what we're looking at here, the train had the engine at the front. So we've got the two wheels of the engine of the bogey, and each of the carriage wheels along there. So that's the kind of displacement measurement we were looking at there. So you can tell what type of train. The other thing we do, uh, there's a slide later on, if we look at high-speed trains in the UK, we have an engine at the front and an engine at the back. And again, what we'll have is peak displacements like this with the two wheels at the front, carriages going along, which is a lesser displacement, and then the two uh, wheels of the engine at the back, which is a heavier one. The resolution, so I say we can go to one, one five hundredth of a pixel, so if you imagine this telly, if it uh, with our two megapixel camera, we have 2,048 pixels across there, 1,000 down here. So each of those 2,000, we're dividing into one 500. So imagine the kind of level that we're looking at there. We believe we're the only system out there just now for structural monitoring business, uh, for outside using video to get this kind of resolution. There are other technologies, obviously you've got laser, that kind of thing, but for video, we're the only ones out there globally that are doing that kind of system. Um, the efficiency, obviously, so you, know, you can do it quickly. You can be there, you can be testing, uh, you can get the results, you can go back to the wall from your office, or in Australia, you can go back to the cool office, um, and you can obviously reanalyze and post process all the data. Just for everyone's uh, so uh, the algorithms we've found that we go down to one five hundred is sufficient to get the kind of resolution that we need. Um, you know, people have said, "Well, you can cameras out there now which are twenty megapixel, thirty megapixel. Why don't we use one of those cameras?" The increase uh, in resolution that you get, you can get the kind of results that you need. A lot of people are quite happy with this kind of point one. 0 0.01 of a millimetre in the structural monitoring world. So that's why we don't need to go down to that kind of level. Uh, we'll look at the 2 megapixel and 5 megapixel cameras, probably our main say. They're industrial type cameras, we'll see them when we go through to the uh, demo lab. Um, and that's, in, that's sufficient, you can see the edge of the camera there. That's sufficient with the software to get down to that kind of level of resolution. Um, so we can measure more than 100 points, this is looking at a rail track, obviously, I uh, know Progress Rail are interested in this, uh, you know, 0.1 millimetre of resolution. A big uh, point that we have is the safety of measurements when we're measuring on the external with rail. Uh, in the UK, I'm sure it's the same in, the, in Australia, to gain access to a rail track, you have to go through a possession order. In the UK, that can take a week to get all that paperwork signed and get trains stopped and anything else you can get access to the rail to put some kind of transducer on there to measure how much it's moving up and down. With us, we can turn up, we can be three to 60 metres away from the track, so we don't have to get a possession order. We can measure and then we can actually be giving results within hours. So it saves a lot of time, it saves a lot of money by doing that. Um, we had an instance where a 
the rail in the UK, you have the network rail, which looks after the infrastructure, all the rail tracks, and all the train companies were on that uh, rail. Government sets standards for lateness. If the train companies are running late, if their trains are running late and it's beyond a certain percentage, they get fines. So obviously, if that fine ha happens, they pass it on to Network Rail, who are looking after the rail. If that's the cause of why the train is slowing down, then they'll pass it to Network Rail. Obviously, with an additional admin cost uh, to be passed on. So one particular stretch of rail, they thought it was moving by 14 millimetres. So they asked us to go along. It was going to take a week to get the possession order. We went along, we measured it, and they slowed the trains down in that time. So we went within 24 hours, we measured it, it was four millimetres, it was within limits, so they could open the track up to full speed again. So then the train companies aren't running slowly, the trains aren't running slowly, no one gets any fines. So that was within 24 hours. If they had the kit themselves, which some of the companies are doing now, they could measure it themselves and the, the responsibility. So we're looking here at some uh, track measurement here, uh, looking at the side, so going outside the possession order limit, uh, we can look at the track and then we can measure it. With our system controller, we can have up to four cameras connected simultaneously. So if you're only looking at a section off the track, you want to look at a little bigger section rather than getting a bigger lens and moving further away. What you could do is have four cameras mounted along there and it will measure simultaneously with the system. Different speeds as well. As a general rule of thumb, what we have with the cameras, whatever you want to measure, so if your train's going at 50 miles per hour or 80 kilometers per hour, what you have is a frame rate of your camera of 50 frames per second, as a general rule of thumb. This was showing the, uh, on that previous slide, this was showing the uh, movement that we were looking at. Uh, so we're looking at resolution better than point one. As I say, you know, a lot of train companies, a lot of structural monitoring companies, that kind of resolution is more than enough for them. Quite often they're looking, you know, a millimetre is uh, what they're looking for. So if we can go to a tenth of a millimetre and sometimes even further than that, that's far more data than they need. Benchmarking for our uh, DMS system, which is the structural monitoring, which is always important to say people think that video technology is recent new and they're trying to get, get their heads around that idea of using video for measurements not just in structural monitoring material testing uh, or 3d measurements and everything else they think it's a newer technology which it is um, it would replace your strain gauges so, sorry craig we're going to take away some of the business but that's why we see applied measurement being an ideal partner for us because they're talking to you about strain gauges and they're offering you an alternate product within their product portfolio um, same with LVDT. So here what we've got um, is a bridge being measured. It sees a track going across. You can see here it was a high-speed train. So we've got the two engines, one at the front, one at the back, with the carriages in between. You can see here they've had to close half the road to be able to get access to put LVDTs on poles to measure how much that was moving. And they've got accelerometers on there as well. So you can see here the blue line is our video gauge, so we could be mounted at the side on the grass bank. We don't have to close the road off like they had to here. And then the red is the displacement transducer that was placed on one of these poles. So you can see we matched what they were getting from their displacement transducer. And we wouldn't have to close the road, we could be at the side here, set up, measuring what was moving. Again, a comparison here with a Leica laser tracker. So what we actually done was offset this by one millimeter, otherwise one would have been on top of the other. This was done at night. You can see here we were using the natural pattern of the bridge underneath, um, and we were looking at these points here to measure. And you can see resolution was better than 0 0.02. The next uh, business unit we've got is 3D measurement. So obviously from the 2D, this, the previous slides were all about 2D measurement, single plane. People now want to measure in 3D and they want to get the movement in the Z direction as well towards and away from the camera. <coughs> got a video here, it's just a um, <coughs> guitar string. Shows there is movement there in the wide displacement. 
there's no X. Hopefully there's no X with your guitar string. If it is, the string will probably broken. But we can also measure in Z. So our precision displacement tracker, uh, we have two different types. We have a user calibration, so you'd have to go for one lane. I don't know if anyone's um, experienced 3D measurements yet or setting it up. It's quite a pain to set it up to calibrate it because there's a lot of different things you've got to do. You've got two cameras, it's a stereo camera system. You've got two cameras, you've got to get the angles right, you've got to get the focus right on both of them. You have to get the uh, distance between them right. So the We've heard uh, a lot of people with user calibration can take anything from half a day to a day before you start measuring, which obviously is a waste of time. It's not a waste of time, but it is a big um, time consuming effort. So we offer pre-calibrated measurement things. If you tell us what volume you want to measure, we'll provide a pre-calibrated head. It's already set up, it's already got the angles, the uh, cameras are locked, locked down and you'll measure that volume. So we have one of the Formula One teams who wanted to measure something of a small volume and then they wanted to measure something of a larger volume. They said we could use the user calibration but if the test was only 15 minutes it would take half a day to set up to measure one volume and then what they would do is it could take another half a day after their 15 minutes test to then measure the second volume. So again a waste of time. So they bought two pre-calibrated heads they can test both of those 15 minutes each and they were done within an hour and a half. And so by the time it would take to set up one system, they were done. Got a video here, we call it the calibration dance. Uh, basically what you've got is the board here, we're measuring the distance. This will come towards you now. And this is part of the process you have to go through to calibrate. What you'll see is the top end tip backwards. So, this is repeated time and time again to get the calibration for both cameras and both set up correctly. And that's why it takes so long. So, we listen to that pain that people are having when we developed our system. That's the kind of measurement head range that we have just now. So you see we've got different measurement speeds and different volumes. So these ones are all the same. These three are the same. The only difference obviously is different speeds for them. So we can measure from 0.3 by 0.4 down to 3 meters squared. If you have something, any out, anything outside of those volumes, then apply measurement node, they'll come to us and then we can create a bespoke system for you. Uh, we can use it on uh, Structural monitoring mounted on two different uh, tripods. Again, we would have to go through the calibration dance to uh, get that all set up. But with a few calibrated heads, we can do different volumes as well. I thought this would cover the majority of the requirements just now. Uh, but so you can do a custom one if you have that requirement. Not underwater, no. Um, so obviously, because it's video. Uh, we have to see the targets and we get asked sometimes, you know, have you done something looking subsurface of a material? We can't see the subsurface and we can't measure that. Same with, uh, you know, like water and things like that. So we could look through a glass into a water channel. So we could look at that um, and we can measure that. So we haven't done that before. Uh, we've done environmental chambers, so up to a thousand degrees plus C. Uh, and we've measured materials at that kind of temperature and down to some we looked at uh, measuring and we have measured materials at that kind of temperature as well. So yeah, water, as long as it's enclosed, we will be outside as the cameras and can see that uh, there's a main factor there. So, yeah, if you had a clear glass scene kind of thing, so that kind of cabinet, if that could contain it, then we could look through. As long as the um, specimen that you're testing, as long as that had, uh, so we could put some kind of pattern on there to track. Then we could put that as well. yeah. What we've got here is a quick video of a crane going towards 
and we're measuring here in x, y, and z. And there's a number of displacement measurements on there. So, just to wrap up, obviously we're really pleased, uh, Metro are really pleased we've got five measurement. They bring a lot of specialist knowledge, they know the market with the strain gauges, and the voltage uh, LVDTs. Uh, obviously, that's the kind of thing that we replace, uh, and it gives an alternative for you guys as to looking you know, into technology. Totally non-contact, so if you wanted to measure something like a foil, you couldn't use a traditional gliponic sensor, you'd have to go non-contact, we offer that now. Uh, so we can replace strain gauges as well. Uh, we replace these LVTs for the structural monitoring side of things. Uh, we've got 3D measurements where you can obviously uh, measure in three dimensions now and see how much it's moving away. If we're measuring new components, um, we can measure wind tunnels. So one of the, uh, a lot of the Formula One teams, that's where it's been a big help for them. Traditionally, what they had was the front wing of the car is articulated a, a further back. So it's looking like this. What they want to do is put an LVDT at the front. So that straight away interferes with the wind flow that's going through. And also because it's articulated, it missed the tip of the LVDT. So they have to put it further back. So they didn't get the actual information thereafter. By using our measurement system, they could be outside the wind tunnel. We weren't interfering with the wind flow. And they could measure the tip as it was moving up and down when they're increasing the wind, obviously, to uh, increase their downforce for the for the car. Um, we've heard, we haven't seen it, we're not sure, but we've heard that they do use, some of the teams use our equipment to set up a car for a race. Obviously, if you imagine something like Monaco, where it's a lot of tight turns in a street circuit, um, you have to have a high angle of attack for their wings, for the wing, uh, wing sections, so they get the same downforce as they are with, say, Spa or something which has got long straights, they can go along at a faster speed get the downforce there, so they have a shallower angle attack for their um, wings, and obviously then they get the same downforce, so they could set up the wings before uh, the test. So to say, we're really excited that we've got uh, applied measurement on board, um, they're gonna, they've already started really well, they've got a lot of contacts out there, they've got a lot of uh, uh, information to give, uh, and they'll be able to give a lot of the product information. They'll be able to quote you, they'll be able to do demonstrations, they'll be able to support you. Most importantly, probably for you guys, is the after sales support. Rather than waiting for us in England, we're about 11 hours difference um, to get the information to you or to support you, or obviously even longer, 24 hours to fly down here to try and support you if you've got someone on the doorstep. If you're in Western Australia, maybe it's a few hours, uh, but around here, obviously, it makes it a lot closer. So they'll provide everything that you need there with our backup in the UK as well. So, if you see any questions or anything else, uh, but thank you for coming on. Um, thanks for taking the time and the effort. I know it's a Friday afternoon, it's a nice day. Um, and some people need to go a bit further away to get home as well. But we have got a demo through to the uh, other side on a material testing machine to show you the equipment. Got any questions? Please feel free. It's Flora, it's Craig, uh, you've got Phil, you've got uh, Darren as well. Uh, I, I'll be around as well this afternoon. So, if you've got any questions, feel free to just uh, ask away. Sure. Yes. Yeah, so with DIC, um, so the digital image correlation. Um, they're looking at an average around the point, so we'll do the actual measurement of a point to point. That's that's a big difference, and that's where we get the accuracy as well. So DIC, quite a lot of the DIC systems won't give you the accuracy that you require. You know, we've measured some of them, and we're you know a factor of ten times better than a lot of the DIC systems. Is AMA going to provide service as you do the job for you, or? So we, our, our strategy in the UK is that we uh, we don't do the consultancy work. So we've got a couple of companies that do the consultancy work. So if someone comes to us, wants us to measure a bridge, then we would do that. Our uh, philosophy is to sell a system. Uh, I'm not sure what Craig's intentions are, whether they will do 
you know, a measurement system uh, to come along and then provide reports afterwards. We will get a, a, a demo system, so we'll probably get a, uh, uh, the universal type system that can do most applications. Um, and we will obviously provide a, a demonstration, so we'll be able to come out like we do with all of them um, and actually taking a measurement for them, uh, get them interested, uh, depending on uh, the job, uh, we may offer something like that. Um, but at, at, at the moment, it's purely for demonstration purposes. Um, to get you guys interested in, in knowing the system. We, offer, um, we, we may even offer to hire out the system as well. Um, so the software is, is fairly intuitive um, and easy to use, which, which Brian will go through when he demo. Uh, but there's, it's not too comprehensive to, to go and do a measurement yourself. Um, we're more than happy to help with post-processing. We've got a lot of support from Brian and Metro over in the UK. Uh, so if we have to go down the route of analysis, we've got some help there, and we've also got um, analysis tools that we can be able to help you guys with as well. So at this stage, that's that's where we're at because we're sort of brand new with the Metro product, uh, but who knows what, it, what it's going to evolve into. Uh, so that's where we are. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. 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 so as I say, uh, obviously just to sell systems if we can. Uh, if it means doing a couple of demos or a couple of jobs to get to that system sale, then it would be quite a to do And then it may justify, you know, you having enough interest in the product to, you know, to actually invest into the system too. Um, just a bit of housekeeping as well. Claude's here, we're going to have a bit of a demo, and then after we've got some sandwiches and a and soft drink and a beer for a beer and a chat, so we're going to have to uh, answer any questions we've got. Um, we've got um, Brendan setting up the machine at the moment, so he's pretty much on the gun. We can, really, we can move in there when, when you guys are ready, unless you've got any other questions that we we can answer or concerns or anything else at this point in time. So AIS yeah, yeah, do uh, like the school science kind of things. So. All right, okay. We'll contact you to know my youngest son. <laughs> He's going to uni next year uh, in the UK to do sport and exercise science. Uh, also come across to Australia with one of the rugby teams, we can do rugby. Uh, and he wants to try and get the years like, employment, if you like, uh, on our rugby teams. Through Bath University. And that's the nearest university we've got to us. But he doesn't want to go there because yeah. it's too close to home. <laughs> <laughs> he says he wants to get his independence, learn how to wash and iron. Not sure how much of that he'll do, but uh, yeah. it's overrated, exactly. Yeah. I'm sure his floor drove will uh, fill up quite quickly. <laughs> you guys stop that uh, feed. So we're also interested in doing more of these seminars as well, so that 